Whether you've been dating someone for a while, live with someone, or have been married for a long time, you might be looking for ways to improve your relationship. There are a few tried and true ways to make relationships better. Be a good listener, make time for each other, have good sex, and share those annoying chores. Relationship experts have found these to be effective, but you can also try these seven unusual ways to get closer and improve your relationship. And if you subscribe, we have a lot more videos like this to help you save your relationship. Let's get into it. Number one, take some time alone. Even though it seems counterintuitive, taking a break from your partner is a good way to improve your relationship. Everyone needs time and space to themselves outside of a relationship. Counselors for dating and marriage remind us that you need that space to breathe. Therapist and author Esther Perel, M-A-L-M-F-T, has two popular podcast series. She talks about how important space is in relationships in her book, Mating in Captivity, Unlocking Erotic Intelligence. People need time to themselves to grow as people and to keep their independence while in a relationship. While each person gets better, the relationship as a whole gets better. In fact, it's what makes marriages work. Do it, whether that means reading by yourself or going for a walk in the park, or you might want to work out with a friend. The result will be that your partner's annoying habits won't bother you as much. You'll feel better and have more patience as a result. Your special someone will also have time to miss you. You'll also bring more to the relationship itself, which is a good thing. Taking breaks from each other keeps your time together from getting boring. Instead, it makes people more interested, leads to more interesting conversations, and helps them grow. In the end, spending time apart will make the relationship more interesting. Number 2. Both of you should go to bed at the same time. You may have heard or read that most American adults don't get the 7-8 to eight hours of healthy sleep they need each night. But did you know that if you and your partner go to bed at different times, it's bad for both of you? Going to bed at the same time will make your relationship stronger. Some people get up early and people stay up late. Some people work in bed while their partner watches Netflix in another room. No matter what, make sure your bedtimes are the same. A certified sleep science coach, Chris Bratner, says that 75% of couples don't go to bed together, which is bad. People who go to bed at different times have more fights, less conversation, and less sex than people who go to bed at the same time. This doesn't mean you can crawl under the covers with your partner and check your social media while you're both in bed. Number 3. Be vulnerable. To be open, you sometimes have to dig deep. Meredith Resnick, LCS Doe, creator of ShamaRecovery.com, said, It may surprise couples, but if each person is curious about their own blind spots, finds them, and then dares to share that vulnerability, it can help them get closer. Resnick said, A blind spot is not always a flaw or a weakness. It can be a deeply held belief about oneself, how a relationship should work, or how love is shown. The belief is so strong that we don't even know we have it. This is why it is called a blind spot. What does a blind spot look like in a relationship? Resnick says, for example, one partner might find out that their tendency to micromanage people is related to their fear of being left alone. For example, they might control the schedule of a loved one so that they are never alone. Telling a partner about this can be the first step toward changing this pattern. This should be a loving process that builds trust not one that causes shame, says Resnick. Number 4. Create novel experiences Even though it's good for relationships to eat your favorite pizza every Saturday night and have other rituals, it can get boring. So, you should change things up and spice up your routine with random date nights and fun times. Terry Orbich, PhD, a relationship expert, professor, and author, says it's important for a marriage to keep being spontaneous even after many years. A book, Five Simple Steps to Take Your Marriage from Good to Great is based on the results of a groundbreaking study she led that followed 373 married couples for more than 20 years. She found that a lot of spouses felt stuck. If you can't go rock climbing or learn a new language, you might be able to buy a trampoline or do something else out of the ordinary. You might be able to find other ways to spice up your relationship. Psychologists say to pay attention to what's new, different, and surprising. Research shows that after a few weeks of interesting dates, people fell in love again and fell closer to their partners. Number 5. Use small things to surprise her. Small actions keep the spark alive and let your partner know you're thinking about them. Couples who get along well treat each other well. Giving or volunteering to help out is a plus. In fact, acts of kindness have a lot of power. 
and those that aren't planned tend to make people feel better all around. Honor the way your partner shows love. For example, they give you a hug because they like to touch people. You'd be even happier if they cleaned up the living room or spent less time at their desk because you value acts of service and quality time together. Learn how to show your love for your partner in a way that your partner appreciates. The five love languages were made up by Gary Chapman, PhD, an author and counselor. They are words of affirmation, quality time, physical touch, acts of service and receiving gifts. Number six, fight better. Even though no one wants to fight with someone they care about, disagreements are healthy. What matters is how you fight and whether you do it fairly and healthily. John Gottman, PhD, who worked as a researcher and therapist for 40 years and studied more than 3,000 couples, explains how to argue more lovingly. The worst thing you can do is roll your eyes or show contempt. These four steps are how you can make this possible. First, make the beginning easier. The focus is on how you sound and what you mean. Speak softly and gently. Being polite helps a lot. The key is to talk without pointing fingers. Don't say anything that could make the situation worse, like something critical or defensive. Then, change what you have said. Don't say every bad thing that comes to mind, especially when you're talking about sensitive subjects. Don't forget that you love each other and treat each other with respect. Next, try to fix things. A repair attempt is a word or action that is meant to stop a fight. Free, this could be done by making them laugh, touching them, or saying something kind of like, this must be hard for you to talk about. You could also find something you both want. For example, you could say, well, our ways are different, but we both want the same thing. Or show your appreciation even during hard conversations. Lastly, think about the good things. When a couple is healthy and happy, there is a lot of good energy in the air. During a fight, a stable and happy marriage has at least five positive interactions for every negative one. So try to say five times as many good things in your conversations, even when you are arguing or disagreeing. For example, a happy couple might say, well, we do laugh a lot, instead of, we never have any fun. Number seven, tell a story about love. Even though it might surprise you, talking about the past can make your relationship stronger. When you start a conversation with remember when, and talk about your first date, your first home, or funny memories, it makes both of you feel good. Your partner will remember what attracted them to you in the first place. We tend to focus on bad news and what our partners aren't doing because high stress can make it hard to connect. If you feel like you're not being valued, try to value others. Train yourself to focus on connections and good things. These surprising but effective ways to improve your relationship can help. Research shows that what keeps couples together is not their personalities or how well they get along. Instead, what makes a relationship work is how the two people interact with each other, how they talk to each other and how well they get along, and if they work on building a relationship together. Recently, my partner and I have been going through a bit of a rough patch, but these seven ways actually truthfully helped us a lot. Do you think that you could benefit from any of these? If so, let us know in the comment section below. I would also love to share my personal story with you. If you truly like this video, don't forget to subscribe and as always, love you all and bye for now.